Okay, let's let's start from the very beginning. In the very beginning, we need to talk about curriculum because the curriculum defines what we're going to do, right? So, but to start off with, we need to know the meaning because only in understanding the meaning of curriculum, our participation will make sense. You can't participate in something that you don't know the meaning of. Okay, so we will start off by having this perception. The Oh, by the way, the word curriculum itself draws its meaning from the Greek or the Roman Empire where they used to have this chariot race. And in fact, the word, the Latin word is curricula, curricula, I think. It basically sounds something like that. It means the, the path to run. So basically, curriculum is the experience one gains in participating in the educational enterprise. Or the formal education in enterprise particularly we when we talk about curriculum basically you're bringing in three entities together right you're bringing in the content you're bringing in the students and they're bringing in the teacher or the faculty or the academic however you may call them so obviously there's going to be three perspective you're going to have the perspective of a theoretical perspective, the the view from the contents perspective, you have the practical perspective, the view from the student, and you have the productive perspective, the view from a teacher or an academic. So basically, you have the three uh, ways of looking at it, and then they are defined as the syllabus perspective, the process perspective, and the product perspective. And then subsequently, I'll talk about praxis, which is a much more uh, a modern interpretation uh, of syllabus. Okay, we will start off with viewing curriculum. We will start off by viewing syllabus as a curriculum. Basically, when we view curriculum as a syllabus, we are just talking about body of knowledge that needs to be delivered. So this takes like, for example, when you walk into a class the first day, your, your head of department or someone walks up to you and says, here is the syllabus. I need you to teach this. So basically, it's taking a very simplistic view. This, your job now as an academic is purely to transmit the knowledge or paraphrase the book or paraphrase parts of the book. So they view the curriculum basically as table of the heads of the discourse, you know, a table of a list of content. So they take a very textbook approach. For example, uh, Belkin talks about, uh, talks that education in this sense is the process by which these are transmitted or delivered to students by those, if by the most effective method that can be devised. So basically, that's it. Find the shortest way to deliver or the quickest way to deliver content. Uh, so, as I said, so this whole interpretation of looking at curriculum as a syllabus is just a way, a system to crea create a system that will allow you to transmit uh, knowledge or content. Okay, this, the second approach is to view curriculum as a product. It's a very teacher-centric approach. Okay, it's dominated by describing the managing of education. It's quite popular today because it, it, it talks about learning outcome. It talks about uh, measurable outcomes and, and, and it's very uh, focused on, on very bureaucratic processes. In this uh, approach to curriculum, uh, educators are seen as a technician. Their job is to go in there and produce certain things. They are not able to change or participate in the curriculum development as, as much as other interpretations of curriculum. So you go in there and you, you make sure you just deliver what it needs to be delivered. And the irony is they, they tend to focus on the product and not on the raw material. So you can go into a class, you may have find a whole bunch of students coming from diverse background, diverse interests, diverse uh, academic traditions. But the goal is one is to produce a, hom uh, a homogeneous uh, output. And this came popular in the rise of vocationalism, education for employment. So education is not seen as an end itself, but rather a means to an end. So if you can see, the whole process is trickling down backwards. For example, in the universities, you educate for employment. So therefore, in secondary school, you will educate 
to participate in universities and in primary school you will educate in a manner so that students can uh, participate from, from participate in the secondary school setting. Uh, the attraction to this approach of curriculum in, uh, in that it, it, that it, it, it documents the det in detail attentions to what people need to know in order to work their lives and live their lives. So it's, that is the major attraction, you know, this, this very systematic documentation and the outcomes are measurable. It focuses on outcomes that are measurable and things like that. So a major proponent, proponent on this concept is called Ralph Taylor. And he gave a very uh, everlasting, apparently this idea uh, first introduced in 1949 and it's been around since then. The four steps one needs to take to design a curriculum from a product perspective. First, you could identify the purposes. The purpose of this, uh, the, the purpose why you need to deliver a, a particular body of knowledge. Then view the experience, the kind of experience that a student needs to gain in this process. Then thirdly, how to organize these experiences effectively. And finally, measure those experience gain attained. So these are the four steps designed by R uh, Ralph Taylor that has gained great uh, traction in, in, the school of, in the world of education. So generally they focus very strong on the behaviorist model because it's talking about what experience you can put a student in so they can modify a certain behavior. So if you drill a student through mathematics so they can, they can demonstrate certain mathematical behavior at the end. The third process or the third uh, perspective of the curriculum is viewing curriculum as a process. It's very student centric. Uh, in fact, uh, Sternhaus talks about when you define curriculum this way, you are actually defining a tentative curriculum. Because here, the emphasis is on, on the students. So you are fully aware of the diverge uh, background of the students. So you know, you're going in with, you are more focusing on the input rather than the previous model where you're focusing on the output. So you go in you with a tentative learning outcome. And you try to achieve the learning outcome, keeping in mind and, and realigning the student's learning and student's understanding in the process. Okay, so here the student contributes to the curriculum. Okay, rather than the teacher is the only one participating. Here what is taught and how it's taught, it's, it depends on the kind of students you have. So this is a very lively uh, interpretation of, of curriculum. It's alive because you can teach three different classes and you walk into three different classes and the curriculum is different. Because the students are different, they bring different things to the conversation. And you, when you realign the understanding, you have to act differently. So it's, it's very alive. Uh, here, in this case, uh, curriculum is viewed not as a physical thing, but rather an interaction of teachers, students, and knowledge. Curriculum is what actually happens in the classroom and what people do to prepare and evaluate. So if you see, this is about, it's a very dynamic process of bringing all the three entities together. Now, the, the final one, we would like to talk about curriculum viewed as a praxis. The praxis model of curriculum theory is practice being, brings this to a center of process that makes explicit commitment to emancipation. These actions are not some simply in form, it is also committed. What basically uh, the author is trying to say here is, that in praxis, basically one has to understand that praxis has its roots in Paulo Freire's theory. Paulo Freire was a Brazilian scholar and he was talking about from a perspective of post-colonialism. So he wanted to talk about how education is a tool to liberate minds and bodies. So even Grandi, who subsequently talked about or she uses the term critical pedagogy. Critical pedagogy goes beyond the situation and the learning experiences within the experience of the learner. It is a process which takes experience both the learner and the teacher through a dialogue and negotiation, recognizes them both as problematic. 
allows indeed uh, encourages students and teachers together to confront the real problem that exists in relationships. When students confront real problem and their existence, they will soon also be freed on their own oppression. So once again, it comes from that same perspective. So it's talking about how teachers and students come together, participate in the dialogue, talk about their real lives, talk about uh, the content or the context, talk about content within a real, real life context. So in the process of viewing the content critically, then one have an opportunity to free oneself from the, the environmental limitation or the mental limitation. So it is really focuses on, on how education is used as to change society. So you can you see, if you, if you have to summarize the, the four approaches, you have the first one that talks about from content. So you're talking about how content needs to be delivered. So, it, so it's purely focusing on content. The second one, it talks about how education is, is defined as a product and one needs to measure and, and produce and participate. So the whole idea of uh, the defining curriculum as a product is how do you prepare people to participate in economy? How do you make uh, design people to participate in, the, uh, in, in, in a society? Then we talked about curriculum as a process. So when you talk about curriculum as a process, then you talk about how people come together, how diverge, uh, di di it takes a divergent point of view. Okay, people coming from diverse background and how all these people are sitting together and bringing their ideas together and how a teacher needs to engage them. So you have a, 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 vari a variable group of students, a fixed body of content, and then you mix them up and then you produce the outcome. And the outcome may not be as intended, but it's as close as you can get. And then the final one is viewing curriculum as a praxis. And here we view education as a mode to transform society. Okay, now let's run by the four approaches to curriculum by which we define curriculum. Now the first one that we talked about is syllabus. It's very popular, especially in the university setting. We, we, talk, about we talk about curriculum and syllabus as though they are one. We always forget about the other experiences that other definitions of curriculum bring to the table. For example, the students, the process, the environment, the activities and things like that. So if you're just focusing curriculum from the content perspective or the syllabus perspective, then in many ways it makes your life easy, but at the same time you're not being truthful to the profession. You just focus on, on what needs to be delivered, the order in which it needs to be delivered. And, um, and that's about it. You do not question uh, the nature of the items or the nature of content that you deliver. Now, if you talk about the, the other extreme from the, uh, from the academics perspective, it means you view curriculum from the product perspective, then you are focusing purely on the outcome. It's very good. It's highly accountable and, and managers love it because you have a list of, pro it's, pro it's almost like a promise statement. By if you come to my class, I promise that you will be able to do this, this, and that, and so on, so forth. But the limitation is it it is it is very behavioristic. Uh, people tend to find the shortest way to get those products achieved. So that you may end up having people teaching to the exam, and and way, and then you ignore the fact that students come to your class with a whole array of of prior background. Okay, now the, the one in the middle, which is the one that looks at curriculum from the process perspective, it's, it's the whole emphasis is student centric. It takes in account that students are participant of the curriculum. So this, as I mentioned earlier, it brings together the triangle or the trifecta or the tri, basically the, the three dimensions. It brings together the curriculum, the student and the academic together and the student sits right in the middle. The learning starts where the student is. So unlike the other two, the learning starts where the curriculum starts. And as opposed to uh, viewing education or viewing curriculum from the process perspective, the learning starts where the student is.
And the fourth one, as I told you, it's it's much more uh, uh, deeper in meaning. That's a curriculum from the praxis perspective. It's basically education for change, education for liberation. So in this case, if you view, uh, let's say, if you are an architecture lecturer and you are bringing this praxis perspective, then you will be very critical about things that are taught in your course. How uh, how the things that you teach should uh, bring about change to the society and environment. How the practices in the past are detrimental to our environment and so on and so forth. Or if you're uh, a language teacher, you would to use language to question the environment. Or even from if you're a math teacher, you will use mathematic to question, use the curriculum to talk about issues that will emancipate people. For example, uh, if you were to do a, a topic on, on addition, instead of saying four apples by five oranges gives you how many fruits, you could construct the problem where the mean had a social meaning to it. So, for example, if you say if somebody was cutting so many trees per hour in, in a day, how many trees would cut? And if you do want, if you do this practice for a year, what is the size of a rainforest that one would demolish? See, the whole idea is to bring in content, but in a, in a social context. Okay, I hope you have covered uh, decently the, the, the definition of meaning of curriculum and the four perspective of curriculum. Thank you very much.